Welcome back to the Wizard's Den Podcast, Episode 7. This time featuring the great, the casual, the theme park casual. What's up, man? Hey, what's happening, Ethan? Not much. I wish I had those sounds like Dre does. I can... <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yes, first time on the channel, but you've seen him around because he comments and shares all my videos. Like He's like... He's like my PR machine. I love it. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Ali. Appreciate. And he's been on the live streams, so I'm sure you guys have interacted with him sometimes. Man. And he has his own channel, which I'll link below. He has 83 subscribers. And guess what? By August 15th, he's going to have 183. So got to help him out with that. He does mostly. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, mostly I'm at Knott's. Um, I, that's the main park that I, I like to visit. Um, um, I try to do other stuff. I, I'm working on videos, but it, it's tough to find time to get to all the editing and all of that. So, mm -hmm. but I did did my first live stream last Saturday at Knotts. How um, was it? It was good. It was good. I wasn't expecting anybody to show up. I just thought I'd do a test stream and then just kind of make it private and mm -hmm. kind of just see how it goes. And next thing I know, I had a few people in there. I actually had somebody that was at the park, saw me walking with the gimbal, mm -hmm. did a search on YouTube and found me. So nice. So that was kind of cool. So, question: You are at Knott's lot now. Is that because of affordability, or because obviously Knott's and Disney aren't next to each other, basically? So, is because Disneyland is restrictive in, in price and reservations, or you just literally like Knott's better as a park than Disney? Uh, well, I grew up going to both. So I've, I've been going to Knott's since I was little. I remember the original Knott's Berry Tales and Corkscrew and um, Wacky Soapbox Racers. So all that vintage merch that's in in the factory store over near Berry Tales now. I was on most of those rides. I remember all the stuff. So Knott's kind of still has a special place for me in, in for nostalgia. Uh, but I was a, a Disneyland annual pass holder for 20 plus years and just basically finances um, dictated that we had to let something go. And so it was the passes that got dropped. And then uh, me and my brother went to Knott's Berry Farm for Boysenberry Festival. And when I saw that the passes were only, you know, just over a hundred dollars, I was like, I'm getting a pass. And nice. it's been, so I've been going ever since. So what you're saying is you went out of Disney's on, you're now, you're part of, Disney's unfavorable attendance. You're not. You're now. You're part of the favorable attendance for Disney. That and is true. Favorable. Yes. If if I visit Disneyland, I am one of the favorable attendance mix. Yeah, and then you'll be in. The, <laughs> you're also favorable for Knotts because they they like their pass holders. Yeah, yeah. They 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 do very well for for the pass holders right now. It's oh, it's well, very very yeah. good. You're in two favorable groups. Everyone loves you. Yeah. Yeah, my my son is a Legoland ambassador pass holder, so he's got a lifetime pass for Legoland. Wow! How how, yeah. how did you get that? Uh, when Legoland first opened here in California, they had the ambassador pass, and it was I believe two thousand dollars when we purchased it. And yeah, but he was four years old, and we decided rather than take a trip to Disney World that he probably wouldn't remember. We decided, mm -hmm. well, let's get him a lifetime pass because he's starting to get into Legos. And no. it's it's been something that he's used dozens of times a year. He takes friends and he still loves Legos. I mean, who doesn't? So he was two. What, how is he now? Like 23? He is, he is going to be turning 18. No, 18. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's well, certainly worth the two thousand dollars. And if you, oh yeah, mine. And he can go to any Legoland park in the world with it. Oh no way! What? Yeah. That's insane. Yep. They gotta bring that back. Gotta bring that back. <laughs> if they took it away. Yeah. So, will you be? You'll be going to not scary farm, right? For the, because we want to try to go together. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I think the tickets go on sale Monday. So we'll try to figure out which day works best, and and yeah, we'll try to do a collab, and you can you can show you've, me around. You've never been, or you have been one time. I haven't been in like 22, 23 years. I used to go like three, four times a year. I used to love Not Scary Farm, but then it just kind of 
kind of became a, a thing where I felt like I was a little bit too old for it. I kind of outgrew it. <laughs> yeah. And so it just kind of, you know, it, it wasn't, wasn't my scene anymore. So. Yeah. I was, whew, I went there for the first time last year and I was mind blown, mind blown. Oh boy. I went racing back the next week. <laughs> it was amazing. It was so cool. I never experienced anything that cool Halloween like in my life before. Yeah, Thank like you. I said, when I when I used to go, it was like the highlight of the year. I'd be there opening weekend and then like I said, two or three more times after that. Yeah. And, and so have you been to Horror Nights ever or just not scary? Farm? I'm just not scary for me. Yeah, I never I never went to yeah, I think they started theirs after I'd already kind of, you know. Left the the, the scare planning, the haunts. Are you planning to attend horror nights at least one time? Um, I'm not planning on it at this point. So, if if there's a, a possible, you know, if I can, if I can maybe get a ticket, I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I haven't actually been to Universal. Gosh, probably since I was like five or six years old. So oh wow! Like the I, 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 yeah. Itself. Yeah, I, I haven't been there in years and years. Universal, ever. Yeah, so that that's one that I, I want to try to get to within the next year, and then I got to get back to Magic Mountain as well. I haven't been there for you know quite some time. I think it's been about fifteen oh, wow. years. Woo! Okay, so definitely just Orange County. You're moving around there. Yeah, yeah. I, I live I live out in the IE, so it's oh boy, know. that's far. Yeah, I was going to say, getting to Universal and Magic Mountains a little bit far, you know, so we, we, and, you know, having a little one, it was, we were mainly at Legoland, we had SeaWorld passes, so we were doing, you know, San Diego and Disneyland and such. Wow. So, you go to Knott's, how often would you say? Um, I try to, I try to get there at least once a month. Um, I'll probably be going a little bit more often now when I can squeeze some time. Um, like I said, I, doing the live stream, it, it was actually kind of fun. So I might try to get down there even, you know, if it's just for a few hours. So what should we call it? So have you noticed any, or well, one, did you notice any, I guess, bad incidents or any rowdy children before the, the massive brawlings and so chaperone policy and did you notice an improvement afterwards all right well before uh, the the main issue i had was the line jumping it was out of control i mean like horribly out of control it was so bad i mean there, there was one time where you know we were in line for ghost rider we'd already been in line probably for about an hour and a half Mm -hmm. And we're up at the switchbacks, you know, just a little bit away from the, from getting on the in the load station. Mm -hmm. And this guy just walks up to the people behind him and says, "Hey, can I can I hop in here?" <laughs> and they they don't say anything, whatever. And it's like, you know, you know, normally I'd be like, "Hey, come on, man, you know, you, you that, that's not cool or whatever." I mean, this guy looked like he could, you know, pick me up and throw me to Catalina, <laughs> you know. So I was like. All right. Well, I guess, I guess I ain't saying nothing, you know, and it's not worth it. And next thing you know, so he's got you know two six or seven line, six or seven family members squeeze their way up to him, and it's like oh, it's terrible. So they all skipped basically a two. Yeah, hour and, and and that was just one family, and but we were seeing it all over the place, and and mm -hmm. it so that was where it, where it was irritating for me. And um, oh. when they with, with the chaperone policy. You know, mm -hmm. I never, I never saw the fights. I never saw anything like that. So I don't know where that never started. And felt like you never felt like in danger or anything. You're like, no. oh my gosh, I can't. I'm gonna if I walk from here to the bathroom, someone I might be in the middle of a fist fight or something. Yeah, no, there was never anything like that. Even even with the kids that got you know a little rambunctious, it was like mm -hmm. I tried to remember. Okay, I was a teenager once. Mm -hmm. What was it like, like for us? Just like yeah, it was just yeah, stuff. it was just you know kids getting loud. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, really what it, 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 yeah, it, it was like, yeah, it's annoying, but it's not, mm -hmm. you know, it's not violent or anything mm -hmm. like that. So I never saw that. With the chaperone policy, though, this last Saturday was my first time going with it. Mm -hmm. And you can notice a difference, a big, oh, wow. big difference. The park positive seemed, oh, negative? yeah, no, way positive. The park seemed so much more relaxed. Mm -hmm. It seemed so much more peaceful. 
it, it the, the mood was just so great that I was like at, at, at about noon, I really kind of noticed, I was like, okay, we got some decent lines here. There's enough people here, but it doesn't feel chaotic. It's not anywhere near as loud as it normally, as it used to be when there would be the, the teenagers running around. So mm -hmm. yeah, the, what, what, with the chaperone policy, Knott's is now off the charts, amazing fun on, on the chaperone days. I have to, I have to check the, the days without the chaperones because I was seeing some stuff that, you know, that it's still, you know, a little rambunctious, like I said, nothing mm -hmm. violent, but you know, you, you just get the, the rowdy little teenagers. So you think they should keep this or well, expand it? Do you think they should expand it all, all, all seven days? And do you think they should keep it permanently or just until school starts again? Uh, if they can keep it permanently, that would be my, my preference. I don't know what that does to their bottom line. I don't know if it's hurting sales, you know, so you kind of have to balance those sort of things out. So I don't want to say, yes, keep it. And, you know, next thing we know, we don't get Knott's Berry Farm seven days a week because they can't afford to open. You need those favorable attendances, you know? Yeah, exactly. So as long as they can get some of the, you know, rambunctious kids to calm down some, then yeah, I, I'd say keep it, you know, at, at the very least Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, you're not the only person that uh, said it was you know, positive. I heard a lot of, a lot of good things, but not really anything negative about it. So maybe you know, yeah, maybe we'll entice more people to come in during those times more normal or not normal, more yes, adults because you know adults spend more money anyway. So maybe some right. more adults will come in during those times, and maybe it'll make up for the loss of the crowds of high schoolers is it high schools mostly middle high schoolers would you say yeah yeah it's probably the middle to high school age probably probably yeah, on, the, on the middle school to early high school i think those are that's that's where it gets a little more rambunctious you kind of don't don't understand exactly what your your actions are causing to people and you mm -hmm. kind of you're off in your own little world at that point so but yeah it, it's it, it's so much better with with the chaperone policy yeah yeah so in terms of you know the bottom line that should definitely if they i feel like if they eliminate eliminate that and positive where the word of mouth like yours comes out more people even just younger 20s will come in and you know spend more money maybe right. get a pass or two and then they actually may may even make more money than when all the middle to high schoolers went there because like i said at least when I was in middle and high school, I was kind of broke, so I wasn't going out. Yeah. <laughs> shirts and mugs and even food, bring it in. Right. You know. So, you know, and this actually may be a positive and all around change for not. So I guess we'll have to see on the next well, actually the earnings calls tomorrow, right? But I won't I won't affect it for tomorrow. But so I guess the next quarter's earnings call for knots uh yeah. will be very interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm very excited. And I'm glad it's been well received. Because the um, one knots took some quick action, which is good. So it's a cool yeah, one. yeah, they, they really weren't messing around. And then obviously Universal in Orlando mm -hmm. had to put in a curfew policy as well. And I, I think yeah, maybe like, hey, maybe this maybe, work maybe the knots thing actually kind of spurred it along to say, well, they pulled it off, and within a couple of weeks, they're already getting good good feedback. You know, let's mm -hmm. let's not let's not wait until something else happens and just you know drop the hammer now. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, maybe inspire others, especially other regional parks, maybe, maybe other Six Flags parks, uh, to try, try it out. And again, yeah. some people, I understand, some people be like, oh, but you're weeding out the children. Well, they're not weeding out the children. If you just bring a 18 year old, that's only 18, right? Not 21, or is it 21? Uh, no, it is 21. Okay, 21 year old, still 21 year old to the park. I mean, I feel like no park should be treated like a mall. Or actual right. like actual park like playground park, you know, where you know, I'm a father and I'm just gonna drop off my three kids and like you go run around, I'll see you in, at 10 p.m. Like, you know, no, it's not a babysitting service. No, no theme parks babysitting right. service. So I feel like you, you know, definitely shouldn't be overrun by groups of children. Yeah, exactly. And and as as a theme park guy, it, it kind of you know 
I don't understand somebody who wouldn't go in with their kids. It's like, I love going. I'm, I want to be on the coasters. Yeah. I want to be on the rides. I want to go have fun. <laughs> exactly. And also, especially like moms and the moms are particularly more, usually more worried about their children than dad. So I can't even imagine like a mom just, you go ahead, go in this park with thousands of people for a few hours or several hours. And I'm just going to go home and not like worry about you. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. But um, good thing it has calmed down and been great, especially because for uh, up, not scary farms didn't come in that gets very, very crowded as we all know. Yeah. So, and I believe yeah. it's going to be in, in place for every night of not scary farm. So it'll be yeah, interesting to I, see if the vibe right. changes at, at scary farm. Yeah. Because when I was again there for the first time, lots of, one lots of people but also lots of that age group was yeah. hanging around but i also didn't i didn't feel like you know in danger or didn't feel like anyone was gonna fight during that so that that's i didn't yeah. like not safe but there definitely was loud as you can say but it was <laughs> quite quite energized it was really cool i just love that event so fun oh you're lucky you to live next <laughs> i might have to get one of the passes for that that do they sell passes for not scary from like a a fear I think, I think they did i thought they did i'm not sure i'm not sure if they're doing it again or not but i, I thought they had a, a scary farm pass i need one. Oh, i need one need one need one and speaking of passes i was gonna get a pass so not i still want to but i was gonna get a pass way earlier on because i was waiting for the construction of a, a particular new roller coaster that, that, that never came to fruition my goodness where's my giga Cat Danny, where is it? Where yeah. is it? Giga. Yeah, I don't I don't know. They 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 dispelled any rumors and I don't know where, where all the speculation was coming from, but Knotts has not said whether or not they're gonna actually put in a new coaster. Personally, <laughs> um I, I would prefer that they didn't. Mm. I think they've got a great lineup if they could get accelerator back up and running once Montezuma comes back online. They've got a good lineup. I don't think they need to add any other coasters. I think they should actually aim for that family demographic and build out some dark rides. I mean, I, I would love to have a dark ride with the new the character they reintroduced, Whittles. They've got their own IP right there. You've yes, got the penis. You got penis that you could use that would be making an amazing dark ride. So I, I I would hope that they would go in that direction at least for a little while. Especially because adding, you know, a Giga or a Hyper Coaster, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to feel like Silver Bullet to me where it just kind of intrudes on the theming and just kind of messes up whatever area it's going to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to let's see. Now the earnings calls, or I don't know if the earnings calls tomorrow, but at least the announce, announce, for announcements will be coming tomorrow at some places. Do you think, uh, what do you think is coming to all the parks, but maybe not as well? Um, I don't know. I, don't, I, I haven't really followed all of the, the Cedar Fair parks, so mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what they've got in store. Um, as far as Knott's goes, I, I don't know if they're going to do much. I think next year might be the Fiesta Village show. So mm -hmm. I, I think they're going to use that as their as their big draw. I mean, you got Montezuma's Revenge, that's a landmark coaster that's mm -hmm. coming back reimagined, if you will. If the rumors that I heard from a one theme park wizard are true, that we're getting well, multiple yes. launches, multiple launches would be quite nice. That I mean, that would be like a new. It would be a new ride in itself. Yeah, especially if it's randomized and you don't know how, how the ride's going to go. That would be, you know, it'd make the rewritability, you know, go up right there. I am curious, though, because like I said, it is a landmark coaster. The mm -hmm. I think it's the American Coaster Enthusiasts mm -hmm. um, literally made it a, a, a landmark. Yeah. So definitely. if you change it too much, how 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 is it still that same coaster? You know, if it's a completely different mm -hmm. launch system and you've retracted it, you know, completely i mean I, I saw that they've they've appeared to have added additional support beams mm -hmm. to the to the back spike so it's like okay you're kind of kind of changing this almost fundamentally so, <laughs> yeah. so it, is this really still montezuma's revenge or is it you know montezuma's revenge 2.0 
you got to give it, you know, a little bit of a asterisk now. Speaking of that, do you think they will give it an updated name? Like Montezuma's Revenge with like a subtitle? Like Montezuma's Revenge of, I don't know, something? <laughs> or Montezuma yeah, I, I hope not. I, I, I hate when, you know, Disney's just horrible at that. <laughs> always add, you know, it's like you got your name, colon, subtitle, and then, you know, who else? It's Star just, Wars, it's Rise of the Resistance. Yeah, it's like Star Wars, Galaxy's Edge, Batu. It's like, how many different names can we call this thing? You know, it's like, oh, we're just going to go to and Smugglers Run. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, so I, I hope they don't change the name. Just just leave it Montezuma's Revenge. And you said for PS Villas, you mentioned a show. Is a new show coming, a renovated show coming? Are you talking about the stage or? Uh, no, I just meant like that. 2023, you know, the big thing is going to be Fiesta Village. Oh, so it's going to be oh, that oh, one's right. going to have yeah. that one's going to have the spotlight and be the draw because, you know, they're they're doing some big renovation over there. They're they're gutting the entire um, arcade building where mm -hmm. Papa Loca and the arcade and the shop were. Um, they've got the stage behind walls right now as well, so they may revamp the the stage there to do you know make it a little bit nicer, do bigger shows possibly. Um, but from what I heard, it's going to be another restaurant and it's going to be a more Chipotle style, you know, where you can mm -hmm. go through the line, you got your burritos and tacos and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, if it's anything like the, the new pizza place that they opened, the prop shop pizzeria, it's, it's going to be an excellent addition for knots. Yeah. And I can't wait to see, I mean, the, obviously they're going to face up the whole area. You think like repaint and stuff. That'll be, I think it'll look fantastic. You think they'll add a new flat ride or just Montezuma's Revenge will be the ride? I think Montezuma's going to be the ride. It, it doesn't appear that there's uh, much room to add another ride. And mm -hmm. I think if they were going to be shifting any of the other rides out and replacing anything, we'd probably be seeing the, the beginnings of that by now. Now, can you tell me? Jaguar. Oh, I love the thing, but it's very, it hurts. Do you think they are ever going to, like, uh, you know, retract that? Let me get some new trains. Give it a nice refurbishment like Montezuma's Revenge. Because I think it's, like, in the same area, like, they're right next to each other. I thought maybe they'd do it together. But now, since they're not, I'm, I'm kind of, I feel like, I'm kind of sad. I feel like they're never going to touch it, at least for a while. Yeah, I don't know. It depends on how extensive they want to get with it. If it's a full retrack, then it's going to be down for quite some time. And I don't know if they want to have both two coasters, technically three with accelerator down. Um, and then you've also got the other coasters that need to go through their standard refurbishment times. Mm -hmm. So it, it starts to put a little bit of a pinch on availability of rides. So it could be that they wait for Montezuma to come back online and then they, they address Jaguar. Cause yeah, Jaguar has been there quite some time. I think that opened in the early nineties, late eighties, maybe. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a rough little ride, especially for how tame the coaster is. Yeah. It's surprisingly rough. <laughs> yeah. And I, one thing I do hope they fix though, you know, when Jaguar goes through, like, over Montezuma's Revenge, like, does it go through the loop or something? Mm -hmm. um, and there's, like, there's the covering. It looks like one of those freeway of freeway pedestrian overpasses. Yeah, yeah. I really, really hope they change that, because every time I look at that, I'm like, oh, that looks like one of those freeway pedestrian ugly overpasses. Yeah, and like, yeah. Oh, that's so gross. So hopefully, do you think, have you heard anything do you think? There, they would just at least make it more aesthetically pleasing. Um, have they? Is it still there? Did they take it down when they took off the loop for Jaguar? Um, I think it's still there, um, but yeah, I agree. They, they they could do something with it. I mean, almost anything would be better. Like you said, it looks like a pedestrian bridge that you see anywhere in LA. So yeah, they can like maybe like if like a tiny temple. I don't know. It can't be that much money. It's just like it just it can have to be super elaborate. Just like. Just a little temple yeah. up into the thing. Like I don't know who came up with that. But yeah, at that point, I, I'd almost say, you know what? Just kind of give us a little enclosed tunnel. That would be more yeah, fun. Yeah, that cool know? too. And light, put some LED lighting in there. Yeah, like, theme it. Theme it to the little Montezuma's Revenge uh, dragon that they have on the marquee, the little snake thing. Theme it to that, and you're good. Yeah, like oh, 
Oh, even better idea. Watch it. So, like, theme it. So, Montezuma's, let's say if the Montezuma has, like, multiple launchings, right? Let's say it has three or four, right? Let's see. Each one of them have has a different, like, theme or lighting package. And the tunnel that Jaguar goes through can do the lighting package of whatever launch is going. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so cool. Yeah. Ooh, that, 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 energy. That's a great yeah. machine. And that, but that's where Knotts is heading, and that's that's what I that's what I'm loving about what Knotts is doing right now. Everything that they've kind of introduced, especially since their hundredth anniversary, they've just been knocking it out of the park. In my opinion, their stuff is top notch. It's looking great, and it's being well received. You know, I mean, even Scary Farm when they introduced the Goring Twenties, mm -hmm. that area was a uh, that that was like the talk of the town last year. Oh yeah, I and he was spent. The scare actors were did such a good job there. I was like, and they're just like citizens walking around, but like really creepy. I was like, oh, I was yeah. like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Make it, sir. And he was yeah. like, yeah. Oh, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, they I, even had the the dead um, big band up on the top of their plan. You know, the guys all dressed yeah. you know, like zombies or ghouls or whatever playing music. I hope I they said, do all the same stuff this year. Yeah, I'm sure that one's coming back. Yeah. Super cool. No, speaking of not scared, I'm actually what did you see that new maze they announced? I believe today, the interactive one. I think. Yeah, that's yeah. Really so cool. everybody was worried that they weren't going to have the the interactive, you know, shoot 'em up maze, but they brought yeah. it back. They, it's in a different yeah. format now, I believe. But but yeah, yeah. They, they've got they've got it back. And it's cool because Universal doesn't have those. I've never been in an interactive maze before, so I'm very excited to check it out this year. Um, how was the other ones? Was you just going like you? They give you guns. I mean, you shoot the monsters, or you shoot little. How to work? Yeah, from what I understand, it was basically like. Um, have you ever done like the laser tag stuff at some of the yeah. fun centers and stuff? It's, it yeah. was basically like that, and you're like assigned. You know, uh, one of the cast members is a leader, and he takes your group through it. And as you're going through, there's you know some of the zombies that are trying to get you, and you got to get them, and. I don't know if there's a score at the end that you're trying to beat or whatever, but yeah, it's, it's, he takes you, you know, the, the guide takes you through and as you're going through, they're scaring you and shooting at you and you can shoot at them and stuff like that. Oh, what? That sounds so fun. I know. It's like, why didn't somebody think of that sooner? And, and like you said, I'm surprised fact, nobody I'm else is doing that. it. Knotts has been doing it for a little bit because I know my friend went through it. And then I uh, still know other parks at least in Southern California have, like implemented the same or something similar, which is very strange to me. I feel like yeah, that'd be such a great idea. But I can't wait for that because that sounds super fun. And okay, so what do you think? What would be on your notch? Well, I guess you already said it, but what would be on your notch wish list? Like what's next, next, next? Yeah, def definitely Dark Ride. That, that would be my first request. Um, after that, I would, I would love for them to switch out some of the flat carnival rides and and mm -hmm. just give something a little bit with with a little more meat to it you know like i said mm -hmm. you know the dark rides are, are wonderful um they, they used to do they used to have the haunted shack and i know it's kind of cheesy mm -hmm. but stuff like that was what made knots knots you know it, it they, they had to have those you know those kind of special little intimate moments and that that's really what knots does well so i'd like to see something like that come back um and definitely either get accelerator fixed mm -hmm. or replace it with something else because i hate walking by there and looking at it because it's mm -hmm. like i want to ride it you know I, th I think it's probably been down more than it's been open since they had it mm. now with recent light testing markings at top fill drags do you think that if Tom Phil Jackson reopens, do you think Accelerator will then reopen with it? Or do you think it's or is it a total mechanical issue? Nothing to do with the top Phil, top Phil Jackster. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I've heard I've heard different different rumors, and one of them was that, you know, it's it's parts issues. And that's why mm -hmm. many of the you know, I, I think it's Intamin makes the the launch coasters and you know, I think they're ha just having trouble getting the parts to be able to refurbish them and, and get them, you know, up to code, I guess. 
So if that's the case and Top Thrill was able to get parts, does that mean that Accelerator was able to get parts? You know, mm -hmm. or is it that, you know what, the other rumor is Nas is shopping it around to see about selling Accelerator. And if yeah. that's the case, then yeah, they probably won't open it. Well. Yeah, I've heard that one as well, selling it to pay for something else. <laughs> Well, they've been doing good. I mean, at hang time. I, I was nervous when when they were putting in hang time because it's like, Knotts has had a, a hit and miss record with with their coasters, mm -hmm. but man, hang time is a good coaster. You know, hang time has one of the best, if not the best, lighting packages I've ever seen on any type of coaster. Super cool. That, that thing is gorgeous at night. And puts on its own little show, like for Christmas uh -huh. and Halloween. I was like, oh my goodness, it's like an additional show at Knotts. Already added up to the hundreds of shows there they have, which is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, and that's it, a, a simple theming like we were talking about for you know Jaguar Montezuma's Revenge. Just mm -hmm. a really cool lighting package can make all the difference. Mm hmm. Like incredible. Now, moving on down the five freeway <laughs> to the Orange O fifty five patch. The big house of mouse, the waistlines McCarthy, the unfavorable <laughs> attendance mix. What is coming to Disneyland or D23 predictions? What do you think will be announced for Disneyland at D23 so the favorable and unfavorable attendance can enjoy? Well, I don't know. With the, with the earnings call, we found out that they're planning $6 billion in capital expenditures. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can go to Tomorrowland. That's it. Suddenly puts Tomorrowland as a possible, you know, gives gives credibility to that rumor now. Mm. When and you got to figure, you've got the 2028 Olympics coming up. Exactly, so, that's what I've been saying. Right. So you want to have your your flagship park in Southern California ready for the international tourists. So we could possibly start seeing some of Disneyland forward coming into fruition simply because Disneyland needs those hotel rooms. So they're going to want to get well, something to going. They, exactly. So I don't know. It, 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 like I said, with the $6 billion announcement, it changes everything. You have to start something quickly so we can start construction and finish it within a few years. Yeah, had, oh, had okay. they made this had they made this announcement about the six billion dollars just a few weeks ago when they started the construction in that parking lot, the rumors would have been oh, even worse than what they were. I mean, everybody was going nuts, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, they're just replanting some trees. And yeah. but yeah, now with the six billion dollar thing, it, it really, really kind of makes you think. Okay, what's what's coming? Did they are they finally you know going to make a push with Anaheim to get some things greenlit so that they can, you know, if they you know make good and say, okay, look, we're going to invest you know a billion dollars in redoing Tomorrowland, maybe adding a little bit of Frozen, you know, thanks to Scott Trowbridge <laughs> and putting out that tweet. Yeah, and everybody's thinking about that. We've got you know Toontown getting revamped. Maybe they're they're using that they're going to use that to try to you know nudge Anaheim to give them the green light to start Disneyland forward and um, get the get the hotel situation handled because I know that they, I mean, it's obvious that's really where they want to want to get going first. Mm -hmm. Once you, once you get the hotels built, then you can handle a little bit more capacity, and then you're going to need more capacity obviously at that point. So then they can start expanding the parks a little bit more as well. Because D23 is just, oh, the park channel is exactly one month and one day from today. That's it. Yeah. One month and one day. Now, do you think, hopefully they'll announce a joint Tomorrowland Fantasyland combo announcement or something? Because come on now, it's right there. They have to hurry up. Look at the yeah. town Disney. They just stopped working on the West End. That's just the, that's just weird. I, I, it's not normal for them, especially in in some cases. You could say, okay, it makes sense, but mm -hmm. when it's a shopping district and they just knock down tenants, yeah, like for nothing, 
to make money? Like you would, you know. would think that they would at least, you know, kind of pour a slab somewhere and have a food truck festival, you know, every yeah. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, something. But they're just letting it sit there. Like I said, you, you knocked out what four or five tenants. Mm-hmm. You know, ESPN Zone gone, Rainforest Cafe gone, Earl of Sandwich gone, Starbucks gone, AMC gone. And all you've got is this pit of dirt behind some walls. It doesn't, that- it, it just doesn't make sense. So hope, I'm hoping that they're just well, biding their time and we're going to possibly learn at D23 that, you know, we got our downtown Disney green light and it's going to, you know, do something. Yeah. Because if they're really thinking of that slow on something, they better start their big things now because they got to be open in six years. Yeah, well, at this rate, it could be that they're announcing the Tron coaster for downtown Disney, and that's why it's taking so long. <laughs> you know, maybe <laughs> we'll a coaster in there. You know, you never know. Yeah. And yeah, because also then they have the rest of downtown Disney to figure out. Um, they're still yeah. painting the other thing that Jazz Kitchen. So I don't know. It's, kind of, it's just so weird because, yeah, you know, Universal's flying, flying on their things. And then. Mm-hmm. Uh, Disney is just kind of lollygagging. I'm so strange to me. How long does it take to build? And it's not even like two stories. It's a one-story shopping center edition. Like, come on. Yeah. They could have had it done by now. Yeah, like, again, it, it's it's because we don't really know what they want to do there. You know, is it... Are they trying to put the hotel back in? Is there something that, you know, they're trying to finagle with the city for that? I don't know. I doubt it, but it just doesn't make sense that you're using, you're you're not utilizing shopping mm-hmm. area that you could have had tenants actually paying you money, making money, giving you, giving some sort of revenue flow. Instead, you're just going with a, a an empty. Especially, you know, the very popular Earl sandwich that got put out again. Oh, Boy. Yeah, that oh, God, I love <laughs> the sandwich. It, it was our go-to. I mean, it was like as soon as we were done with, with the parks, it was go grab a sandwich, enjoy an evening sitting on the patio, and then head back to the hotel or head home. Yeah, it, it was it was a tradition for us with our little sandwich. And like this point, it's a race. Who's gonna open first, downtown Disney or Tarzan's Treehouse? Because come on. <laughs> Yeah, treehouse. Yeah. No, I hope I hope the treehouse becomes like done, like on September tenth, and then they keep the scrims up to hide the theme. Then on the eleventh, they're like, "Guess what? The new theme is whatever it is, and it's open now." And they just do a celebratory dropping the scrims, and people just go on because there's no. no that, yeah, that'd be awesome to do something like that for D twenty three. You know, have have yeah. have a big reveal like that. That's it's what they need to do. They need to do stuff like that. They, they, There's no way you'd be working this long on a tree house. There's no way. It's a tree yeah, house. It, do, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, unless unless they're stripping the whole thing down and rebuilding everything, it shouldn't be. There's no reason to have it closed. It takes, what, two cast members to, to man the whole thing and keep it open? Yeah, I mean... Come on, it, these things are very strange to me. Strange, just strange. Now, with six <laughs> billion dollars being spent, if nothing was announced for Disneyland, I'd cry. Yeah, th- th- there's there's got to be something something big, and I think the I think the biggest of the announcements is going to be for Disneyland. I think Florida, they've kind of. It's one of those situations of they poke the bear, bear mm-hmm. bit back at them, and now they're kind of like, okay, well, we're just gonna gonna pull back some as as mm-hmm. their little punch back. Mm-hmm. So, also, they yeah. have a whole bunch of stuff under construction, so they're good. We need some cool here. Yeah, I mean, we've got Tiana coming, so that's the, it, I said sh- something I, cool. <laughs> 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 well, we should D twenty three. If we don't see something for for Tiana, it's it's going to be really weird, just because um, it's it's so close and there's um, not. Well, I know they're going to have like a whole in the in the the pavilion area. They're going to have like a whole the model of Tiana. Like there's a whole like exhibit. Some 
for I'm definitely Katiana will be there, but yeah. again, something cool. Well, if they announce People Mover, that's gonna blow that'll everybody's be, minds. No, that'll be pretty. Uh, that'll be pretty. Yeah, cool. I, I think if, if, like I said, with the six billion dollar announcement, that kind of changes things and puts Tomorrowland possibly in the mix. And if that's the case, that's huge. If they if they're going to redo Tomorrowland and do it properly, then that's going to be that that's a massive announcement. But we could also be looking at the Avengers E ticket that never never got done, and they could be saying, "Okay, we're going to go ahead and put that in." Um. Yeah, that too. It's, ah, it's so fresh. See this guy. Now let's talk about this. It's frustrating to me. So Universal just starts and they announce their churro stands later on, six months before they open. I like that. It keeps the suspense going. Disney says some, and then they say it's going to start in 2025. And then by the time it actually starts, everyone's always, all oh, the excitement's over. And yeah. then, then, it, then the, the, something that should take... Um, what should we call it? It should take maybe like a year or two, but then it takes like three or four because it, the things, the dirt pits are just sitting there like they are right now. Mm -hmm. Ugh, frustrating. Frustrating. I don't know how people can like something that they're so, like, why did you spend so much money to, 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 to take so long to build something? Like, I feel like you want to build as fast as you can so you can get the expense with over with and then start getting the return on the investment. Why? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, there's, but off. there's two schools of thought with that. You know, yeah, it's get the money spent, get it done, built and start, you know, making money off of it. And then there's the, well, let's spread out the cost over several years so mm -hmm. that it's not one big hit. And it looks like we made tons of money this year, even though we're in the midst of building things. But then it's like, at that point, then you've got like five or six projects going on mm -hmm. at different stages. And then and if that, you do that, that's cool. But why tell someone and make a big splashy announcement three years before it even starts? Like, come on now. Tiana. Yeah, and, and, announced yeah I think during. Toontown was the one that kind of was a little bit of a surprise for people. I think that one, when they announced mm -hmm. that Toontown was going to get completely redone, I think everybody was kind of like, really? We didn't? didn't think you're going to do that. We thought we were just getting Mickey and Minnie. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, no, nah, we're going to redo the whole land. Like, yeah. Okay. And see, that one, at least they started soon. They said March. Okay, cool. A few months, boom. And so in March, cool. You know, another stuff, again, like Tiana. I think it's when they just don't give a date. And that's when you should be worried. Yeah. Like Tiana. Oh, Tiana's going to be the Splash Mountain. Yeah, even though we don't know how that's going to work yet, because here's two pieces of rushed concept art but we're gonna announce it because there's a pro going on right now so boom <laughs> and then and then you yeah, know and then they're trying to play catch up and trying to figure it out and... about it for two years and it's funny usually that can work if you don't say anything about it for two years and some of like, yeah I, I oh forgot about that but if this and tiana with every single time every single time even uh, my friends I hear, oh, ooh, ooh, Tiana's coming to Splash Mountain. They're going to replace it with Splash Mountain Tiana. That's the one people didn't forget. So Disney, how about this didn't work for Disney this time. They yeah. didn't, people didn't forget this one. They're very excited about it, or some people are, are very excited about it. So their little plan didn't work. And they're probably like, oops, wait a second. We should actually do this now. We should probably give it to <laughs> people keep asking about it. <laughs> Oh, so, so you're of the mindset that they, they made the announcement and thought, well, maybe we'll do it, maybe we won't. And then people and just yeah, kept, kept asking look, about it. They're like, all right, I guess we got to do this. It. It's certainly not a coincidence that they did it right when George Floyd was happening. Like, they, they had two pieces of concept. I mean, they used the Disney World boats for the Disneyland concept art. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, that tells you what's going on. And then they didn't say, and then said nothing, like nothing, no date, right. nothing, like not even like, you got to find out the storyline from Jim Hill. He doesn't work for anything. I mean, <laughs> yeah, come on now. They had nothing until recently. Yeah. And they then all of a sudden it's all coming over. We're going to share more at the Essence Fest in New Orleans two years after we announced this thing. 
then oh now we can show you a model oh now we're excited about it because we took this is probably the time or maybe at least 2021 uh, maybe yeah, yeah probably late i'd say i don't know i feel like they actually would have announced it last year early this year you know almost like just think about previous re things right guardians uh tower of terror guardians of the galaxy cow terror that was announced in comic-con what in uh summer of that year 2016 right mm -hmm. and then january 2017 closed may 2017 open and credit coaster was announced what at 2017 was x uh d23 uh, d23 right so t23 2017 closed january 2018 open june 2018. so there's no uh, the president says there's they didn't and uh, never announced those other two things two years before it actually happened they did it much closer to the time where it's just going to close so I'm, I'm telling you not a coincidence they said woohoo guess what guys let's capitalize on this change flash mountain also because of that partition was going around you know, and they're probably, oh, look, we're already working on this. Or maybe they weren't. Maybe they said, you know, that position, that's a good idea. Let's do it. I don't know. Who knows what they're thinking. Yeah, I could swear we had seen that concept art like years before that somebody had had done that, that it was already proposed at some point and it didn't go anywhere. You know, mm -hmm. so I, it, it, I feel like when they, when they made the announcement, I was kind of like, I've seen this art before. <laughs> You know, it's like, I, I, don't, I don't think this is something new, yeah. and which is fine, but <laughs> I think that's what they did. I think they pulled some, you know, old mm -hmm. concept art out, said, yeah, we're going to do this. And, you know, uh, to, to do a, a retheme of this scale, it's not a quick fix. It's not like, you know, mm -hmm. slapping, you know, some, uh, some non-moving animatronics onto a roller coaster, mm -hmm. you know, you're not just adding some neon lights and whatever. You're not that this one it's, you've got to, you know, really think about what happens on the ins inside of the ride and the interior portion. And, and not, not to not mention that you have to, you have to make it as good or greater. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's a beloved uh -huh. ride. It's not uh -huh. something that everybody's like, Hey, if they change it, no big deal. This one is, no, we love this ride. Everybody, you know, there's a lot of people that grew up with this ride being, you know, their favorite ride ever. And now you're going to change it. And if you don't do it very well, you're going to have people that are really pissed off. Yeah. yeah you know? like you I mean, ne never, play never play mind play. the people that are, you know, the, the safe splash people. I get it. You know, you, you, you don't want it to go and whatnot, but if I, I if, my my opinion is nobody's avoided the ride before. Nobody said, "Oh my God, no. I can't go on." You know, I can't go on that. It's just too traumatic for me. Nobody nobody's doing that, other than you know the people I've that are taken afraid. Other than the all my friends on it, and anyone who said they don't like it is yeah because of the drop. They never said, right. "Oh God, I can't get on this." That's why it's too racist for me. I can't. <laughs> some some of my best friends are are black they're darker than i am it's their favorite ride they'll go on over and over and over again i don't see one racist element in there they right. i think they did a good job of stripping whatever i mean they built the ride it didn't include you know any of they just focused on what they should the critters of the movie which is totally fine with me i mean they could literally like i don't even know most people don't even know what movie it's from it took i had a, like a race i, I only found by research like years ago most mm -hmm. people people still ask me what's this movie from I'm like mm, it's down to the south can i watch it no yeah i can't watch it i don't ah, it's just so yeah, yeah i i you know 90 percent of the people out there have never even seen the movie i'd say 80 yeah. percent probably haven't even heard of the movie other than exactly. you know oh there's something controversial about this ride whatever and, and see, so nobody, so nobody avoided it. Everybody loved it because it was a log ride. Exactly. Everybody wants to go on the log ride. It's Southern California. It's Florida. It's hot. You go on the log ride. And see, my and so, favorite part of the ride really is the, like, oh, the thing that makes me go back is the music. I love those three songs, all mm -hmm. three of them. That's why I can't even imagine. I am trying to think of what. I mean, there's some good songs in Princess and the Frog. 
Oh. If they don't use friends on the other side going up the lift hill, then it's automatically a bad ride. But yeah, that's that they're they're saying that it's you know uh, the story takes place after the movie. So yeah. what do we do? You know, you, again, I don't you're, know. You're, and that's why and you're I taking heard, stuff heard. that you know you, you know a lot of people love Princess and the Frog and they love the music. If you don't have that music in there, you're going to have people going, "Well, that's a miss." Yeah. And I heard they can want to create their own original music. Ah, uh -uh. scares me, scares me, scares me. I yeah, don't again, you're going, you're, you're up against, you know, music. some of the biggest, I mean, zippity doo dah. Mm -hmm. If there is a quintessential, you know, Disney song other than maybe Wish Upon a Star, you know, it's zippity doo dah. That's one of the one of the biggest Disney songs. It em embodies so much of that Disney feeling. Mm-hmm. I you, mean, you, everyone you're, so, you're, it really makes everyone smile. How could you not? I literally have the soundtrack on my phone. Mm -hmm. And when I get sad, sometimes I do listen to it, and it really does help. I hope Disney doesn't disable it from Apple Music like they did with some other things. Uh, uh. That would be very upsetting. I'm I'm still mad they took it out of the music loop on the Esplanade. I was like, where is it? I'm like, no. That's yeah, I, I I don't understand how. I, I it's okay, fine. Movie, if you want to say that's you know problematic and you know it's going to scar children if they watch it. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. I, I I understand movies. You know, stories can sometimes you know affect people. I I I understand that. Mm -hmm. But zippity doo dah by itself. Yeah, like what the heck? Also, that, that's that's no, a bit of a stretch, especially when nobody can watch the movie. Those Fantasyland dark rides have much, in my opinion, darker stories, like from their like original non-Disney stories, a much darker stories than Splash or Song of the South ever it was is, and right. those are fine. People don't know those <laughs> either. Just like they don't, that, people are probably more likely to know those dark stories than they are of Song of the South. Yeah, yeah. My goodness. My, I just want my Briar Rabbit back. Oh, I'm going to be so, I plan to be on the last log, the very last. Oh, man, there's going to be, they, I, I how, how are they going to announce what the closing date is? That ride is going to have a 30-hour wait. I mean, if they don't do a, basically a, a closing weekend and just stay open and let people ride mm -hmm. as much as possible, you're going to, you're going to have some really upset people. Yeah, because uh, I told my friends, I'm like, listen. I don't care. I don't work next day. I'll take off. I'll be at 11.59 p.m. on the last log. <laughs> and I'll fight someone to go on it. <laughs> not very farm over here. Because I'll fight someone. You know? <laughs> I'm being on the last log no matter what they say. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, it, it could be a moneymaker. I mean, think about, you know, having a private party for, you know, the closing of Splash Mountain. I'll rent it out all day. I don't That's care. what I mean. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of people that would do that, that they'd pay big money to be able to say, you know, I was on, you know, one of the last, last logs through Splash Mountain. And also, I don't care what they say either. I want some merch. You can't put, you can't, a, a rabbit on a, a, a log going down a hill, like the attraction poster, can't be racist. It's racist. So Disney sell it. Okay. I don't, you're not profiting off. Oh well, you would be, but just sell it, God dang it! Just well, sell they, they've it. been they've been selling it for you know thirty plus years. Yeah, I'm mean, invited. It's Splash just Mountain so works. it's just so silly to me. And and I, like I said, it, you know, the people that you know didn't never avoided it before. The same thing's going to happen once it becomes Tiana. Nobody's going to mm -hmm. avoid it because of you know oh it's you know it's not yeah. Splash Mountain, so I'm not going on it. No, you're going to go on it. Everybody's going to go on it. And as long as they do it very well, everybody's going to be like, okay, we've, we've got our log ride and it's just Tiana now instead of Splash Mountain. Yeah, see, and yeah, shout out to the OG55 crew. They have a whole, I'll try to find it, a whole mm -hmm. video, whole video on what they call it, the political decisions, I guess, that Disney makes. Splash Mountain being one of them. I'll mm -hmm. link it down below because, you know, maybe, I am probably won't be, but... There's always going to be, there's now going to be a certain set of people, a very small set of people, that will not go on Tiana because I'll be like, oh, that's woke Disney. And I'm sure they that they probably won't even go on it. 
because of that reason, even if it's a great ride. Well, that's what I mean. It's like it's dumb if you, if that's why you're not going to go on the ride. I mean, it's yeah. not like you know, it's it's at that point you're being just as dumb mm -hmm. as the people who say that Splash Mountain is racist. They, I know, they're all dumb. you know. It's like it's like no, no, no. We're <sighs> it's just so frustrating. It's funny because even people, I feel like people that say that Splash Mountain's racist still go on it. I I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like it. I feel like they still should. Have not well, they should have touched it. It really needed a nice refurbishment with a nice lighting. Oh, yeah, that's a very separate thing. But the lighting in there was obviously terrible. I kept going out. If it closes and reopens, the lighting is just the same. Then screw Disney. <laughs> well, I think I think that's part of what's going to happen is they're going to kind of readjust a lot of the interior because I, I've heard that some of the parts that need to be fixed and replaced, it's it would have to actually cause the ride to be down for several days in order for them to get the equipment in to comply with the OSHA requirements mm -hmm. to be able to have the, the workers in those areas. So yeah, that's first, the problem is they have to basically shut the whole ride down and some parts are just inaccessible due to OSHA requirements. And it's like, so with with the retheme and you know replacing things, they can go in, gut it, and mm -hmm. change things so that refurbishments can happen as they're supposed to. And then, but come on, you can touch. Oh, I didn't like when they touched Tower of Terror, but I really like Guardians of the Galaxy much better. It was, oh, such a good ride. You can touch California Scream, and I really like that soundtrack. I have it on my phone, but I like the Incredicoaster. Nice visual improvement. I just but I just can't Jack stand Jack all the the on Incredicoaster. It just feels like they say Jack Jack a million times, and by the, <laughs> by the time I'm done, I'm just like I don't want to hear the name Jack and anywhere ever they again. See Jack Jack's on a stick over there. Too. Oh yeah, that <laughs> yeah. <Oof. And> then, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then go, Splash Mountain. That's part of the mountain. There's a whole challenge, the mountain challenge. People, yeah, Splash Mountain's a little different. You know, it's part of the oh, what's a park icon? Oh, there's a castle. There's Matterhorn, Space Mountain, and Splash Mountain. Yep. People, Thunder Mountain too, but people say Splash Mountain within Thunder Mountain. That's a park icon. You can't change that. No, I love Mom Odie. I really do. But I don't know how I'm going to feel seeing her ship on or her house, her treehouse, whatever it is on top of there. Oh, I don't know. I I, oh, I don't think I'm going to like it, but I think I'm going to like it. But I think I'm, you know, I don't think this will be like Tower of Terror. I don't think I'll like, or like Guardians more. I don't think I'll like this one more. Especially with that whack ass name, Tiana's Hollywood <laughs> Adventure. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Getting rid of the name Splash Mountain was a very bad idea. You have to keep at least put Mountain in there. I mean, Space Mountain, Matterhorn Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. That doesn't work. You got to yeah. keep the Mountain theme. You're yeah, a mountain. They, yeah it, it, it's really disappointing because they 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 didn't understand that part of you know the the fan base we understand the mountain range, mm -hmm. you know, those, those rides are the rite of passage type of rides for kids. Mm -hmm. Once you're tall enough to go on splash mountain, it's a heck of a day because you're finally able to conquer another mountain. And that's, yeah. there, there's some, there's intangibles there that they're losing. And it's one of those things where, you know, the, the, uh, they used to call it declining by degrees. Mm -hmm. And it's only a little change, it feels like, but over time you start noticing so many of them that you go, okay, well, there's there's a lot of change that's happened and it doesn't feel the same now all of a sudden. And this is one of those things where remove just, just by removing the name Splash Mountain from the ride's name, you're kind of destroying a little bit of that fan base fabric that we've all come to love and the lore of Disneyland. Oh, oh that's atrocious. And then really it come is. On. the replacement Tiana's Bayou Adventure. That sounds like the new uh ride at the Iowa actually the new ride at the Iowa Adventure called what you call it? Dragon Falls is better than that. Come on, <laughs> man. Terrible. Well and, and then you think you think if they're gonna Bayou end up doing Mountain, I don't know. Yeah, Something. it just needed it, it needed to be, you know, Splash Mountain, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. 
that yeah, would be fine. Yeah, that's you know, the perfect time to use an acronym, uh, uh, colon. <laughs> right, exactly. At least give us our Splash Mountain, you know, and then we can, you know, some people will call it Tiana, some people will call it Splash Mountain, but at least we have it in there and it, be, it remains part of the mountain range. I, I hope you know I'm going to call it Splash Mountain even after Tiana. Like, yeah, I, I, I still call Tower of Terror, Tower of Terror. <laughs> even, though yeah. even though it's you know guardians it's it's no, tower of terror to me seeing and that, that one, and that one doesn't even have the pedigree of splash mountain that one was there for only what like 10 12 years at the most yeah so but, uh, yeah splash mountains 30 years and it was the original uh, it's it's going to be splash mountain for a long long time and you're gonna both are gonna look the same splash mountain with and and tiana Ooh, I still think and it's gonna be, it's gonna be really disappointing for me if if they end up doing something in that motorboat cruise area in between mm -hmm. um, Small World and Matterhorn, that would have been a perfect place for a wonderful Tiana boat ride. Yeah, that would be so cool. You know, turn that into a fanciful bayou right there. It would have worked. Mm -hmm. You've had you you know you got your lagoon and infrastructure there for already for a boat ride. It, ah, it just it, it's frustrating because or even maybe make part of could, oh well, there's phantasm right there but some that part of Tom Sawyer's Island could have been a Tiana boat ride like a put a dark ride somehow using the river something. yeah because then it would have been close to New Orleans Square and then I don't know yeah I mean I get it with, at Disneyland you know it kind of fits that it's you know kind of be hugging New Orleans Square but at the same time I, a lot of us thought okay if tiana is this or wonderful... if you take out poo and just put a navi river adventure type tiana dark right there Ooh. Yeah. oh man yeah that that would have been better i mean poo as much as you know i've got memories with my son on it from when he was little but yeah it's like i i would easily give up poo <laughs> yeah so refreshing, so refreshing. Look at that. Now, over half this conversation is about Splash Mountain because that's how mad I am. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, but that's but that's what it means to people, and that's where Disney really should, you know, tread lightly on these kind of things and really think about what they're doing before, you know, announcing these things or you know deciding to do them. It's like really understand that you've got a a fan base that is different than Universal. And knots and see where all these places, you know, you've got fans that grew up with these rides and cherish them. You know, that there's there's more than just I like the ride. It's I remember going with my best friend in fifth grade and we took the picture and we bought the picture. Yeah. You know, those kind of things that it, it you, becomes, you're, it becomes a part of you. Exactly. And and I understand, you know, we can't, you know, save everything because everybody's got memories everywhere. <laughs> But there's some of those, the, Splash Mountain is a marquee attraction. It's not just some little ride. It's mm -hmm. a massive part of Disneyland. Exactly. You know, like, example, so, Matterhorn. The Matterhorn. People are like, I remember I was with, with my friend, and we went uh, for or on the holidays, and they were doing their thing. And I was, I started they're eating, I think. And I single rider mat on four times in a row. I was like, this is great. And they went on it. And I'm like, why did you do that four times in a row? I'm like, because it's just great. Every time I get on that thing, it reminds me of when I was, one of my very early memories of Disney when I was at camp. I don't remember, I barely remember anything else. Um, and then I went on that Matterhorn. And that's the first roller coaster. I was like, wow, this is fun. I like this. And ever since then, that point has a special place right here. Special exactly. Park. Yeah. And and that that, you know, I mean, that's what Splash Mountain is for a lot of people. There's it's that mm -hmm. first big ride, some for some people. Mm -hmm. And like I said, when you when you mess with with those kind of memories and nostalgia and that connection that people have to your, you know, I said to say your product. You know, you really got to be careful with it because you could be alienating fans. And over time, you know, you may not think it, but over time, it's it's going to start to de deteriorate that feeling. Exactly. You know, and then another great splash. This is my first Splash Mountain memory, too, right? A little, this was actually before the Matterhorn, right? I was like, Grandpa, I was like three. And I was walking, every time we go to Disneyland, I don't, we are not past Splash, and I look at the drop, I'd be interested, but I'd be like terrified at the same time. And then I was like, you know, 
I, I, I'm gonna go on there. And then it's like, I sure it's like, yeah. So we stood in line, and I came down the drop, and I was crying. But it was a great memory because now I love it. But I remember it came out and crying, and my grandma was mad. My grandpa, it was great stuff. <laughs> but I'll never forget it because it was like, wow, and then wow, and then ah, ah. Uh -huh. oh, great yeah. stuff. See, and that—that's why if if they do Tiana well, I, I think it'll things will smooth over pretty quickly. But, but if, do you think they're gonna do it well? Oh, gosh, it's it's really a coin toss with Disney right now. I, I, I if they're if they're sticking with that time frame, it really worries me because we don't yeah. even know when it's closing and they're supposed to be opening. 2024. Even if it's late 2024, that gives them roughly two years. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I I get really nervous about it. Yeah. I'll, give them the, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, it's it's Disney, but seeing how this whole thing is played out with it, it just I don't know. And, and it, I mean, there, there's even talk that you know I, I think it was the OG OG guys. They they were they were saying that it seems like possibly there was a, a little bit of subterfuge happening with Peter Rice and potentially he forced their hand and gave a date when there really wasn't a date. Oh no. But Peter Rice left, right? Oh yeah. He's, he he's been, fired. he's been relieved of his duties. <laughs> yeah, <you're not> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had a seven minute meeting and left without a job. Oh man. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. So, so we shall see. Like I said, I, I'm a little nervous. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that, you know, Disney can pull off amazing things. But if if I had to put money on it, I would probably be betting against it. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Now you're scaring me. I'm going to go quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Thing for casual, everybody. Thank you so much for coming on the channel and devoting at least 35 minutes to Splash Mountain. That was very important. <laughs> Even though he is the Nats guy, but yeah. wow, Splash Mountain is very important to me. Um, where can everyone find you? Not on Orange Road, but well, you can find you on Orange Road 55 on one episode, but where they can like find you all the time. Well, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Theme Park Casual, where we have thoughts, ideas, and discussion for the casual theme park visitor from a former theme park commando. And you can also find me on Twitter at Theme Park Casual for more discussion and, you know, maybe some little fun stuff here and there. Awesome, awesome. And I'll link his store. You forgot your store, man. You oh, yeah. You can get, get my merch. Uh, I've got my logo and some other stuff. Got some T-shirts out there. Um, yeah. I'll put his link to his channel, his merch store that he's really downplaying. <laughs> and my I'm not I'm not the big salesman yet. I'm, I'm working <laughs> on it. I'm working on it. And uh, and you can find them on Twitter, theme park. And you can find me right here. Like this video, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts on Splash Mountain, Knott's Bay Farm, Magic. My new CEO I actually wanted to touch upon, but I completely forgot because I got so engulfed in Splash Mountain. But um, <laughs> And all that other stuff we talked about, I almost forgot because that's really all I'm thinking about. <laughs> and subscribe. <laughs> and thank you for being on the channel. And have a fantastic, splashy day. <laughs>